uh, distributed meetup two. Good night, Berlin. Uh, good evening, London. Good great Stockholm. Uh, Swin CPP meeting uh, Stockholm. This is now 11. So we have been pretty busy the last time. Less is more, let's build a spaceship. My name is Harald Achitz. I'm a senior software developer at Gettinger, uh, or Gettinger, as we say in some parts of the country. And we use uh, C++ to save lives. We make medical devices. You can find me online. It's not that hard. Um, about this talk, it has some history. It was originally a short lightning talk, just about uh, how to implement uh, comparison operators. And then last year, we have a standard proposal to, to get a spaceship operator into C++, a three-way comparison, as other languages have it. So I matched this together and, and, and created sort of the title. So now we have a talk about how today comparison works, a little bit what is the theory behind this, and what the future very possibly will provide for us. And the real motivator is actually this sentence from the standard proposal, which says, the goal is to be simple enough to be teachable while still enabling the most powerful and precise comparison in any major programming language. And this sounds so wonderful, right? I mean, most powerful, precise comparison in any major programming language. We want to have this. Simple enough to be teachable, simple enough, right? We buy it. But simple enough, what does it mean? So I thought I give this a unit test and see how simple it is to teach. Yeah, comparison and ordering. So why actually do we do this? Some things look nicer when they are in order. For example, books on a bookshelf. But mainly search works better. Right? If something is in order, we can chunk it into parts. If the element is there, we can we have it. If not, we compare. Shall we go on this side or this side? So it always chunk in two parts. This is why on the very left is two. In the exponent, we have how often we do this to have the worst case, where we either find it on the last position or we don't find it. And this scales very good, as we can see. And this is so called all, all log n. And this is what, what people want to have. So what is required to, to, to have actually an ordering? Uh, we need equality and inequality. And equality, we have different types of equality. So we have structural equality and equivalence, which means they are not unequal. So we interpret it that they are the same. Not important for our talk is physically uh, identical. We can compare pointer. It's because it is actually this, the total same object, but it's not important for us. So equality and equivalence. The different is if, if, if I have equality and I put the thing into a function, if they're equal, they always return the same result. If they are equivalent, this is not the case. So an example would be case insensitive, insensitive string comparison. I say two strings are the same. And I don't care about the case, but if I get a special character from the string, I will get a different character. Inequalities, we have non-strict inequalities and strict inequalities. Uh, I have written down the uh, comparison operators, which we have, less equal than, but also subset. Uh, strict in inequalities is less, greater, and the proper subset, which is a subset with the element less. So and this is actually short summary of what I said now. And this is the one of the very few things you can remember. Different types of equality, different types of inequality, and they have a meaning. So comparison and ordering, establishing equality and inequality, how do we do this? We have the rational operators in our language. We have corresponding function objects, because the operators we cannot throw around, but this we can pass around function objects. And we have in, in uh, STD algorithm a few things like lexical compare. We compare one thing after the other. And STD equal and include for comparing ranges, if they're equal or if one range includes another range. And then we have already a three-way comparison for strings. Uh, the one is from STR CMP from, from C. And we have also the string, which returns uh, smaller zero if we uh, have less, zero if they're equal and because the rift, the other string is greater. So let's have a look at the rational operators. So these are the, the rational operators we, we, we use and we can implement in our language. And they are actually binary relation. 
and they create ordered sets, or ordered pairs of sets if we apply them. And they rational operators, they have some, some properties. And I have, I've written them down, you don't need to memorize them, but it's good to, to have seen them one time. So symmetric, asymmetric, anti-symmetric, reference, uh, re reflexive, irreflexive should be this transitive, total and uh, trichotomy. Also symmetric and asymmetric relation, if A relates to B, then B relates also to A. And if it, the asymmetric part is if A relates to B, then B relates not to A. And uh, it's much better for me to read if I have a notation that looks more like Swiss code, so it makes much more sense. If A equals B, then B equals A. If A less than B, then it cannot be the other side around. So this is the difference between symmetric and asymmetric. Antisymmetric relations, no pair of distinct elements relates to another. Uh, it makes also more sense if we have a for me to read if we have a concrete example. If A less or equal B and B less than equal A, then they are the same. And if this is not the case, that they're not the same and one is less than it cannot be the other, cannot be also less. So finally, reflexive and irreflexive. Reflexive, every element in X relates to itself and irreflexive, the opposite, does not relate to itself. So it's also very easy to understand x, x equals x, or x is not less than x. Transitivity, if A relates to B and B relates to C, then we have a relation from A to C also. Also with, with code-like notation very clear to follow. A total relation, A is related to B, or B is related to A, or both is the case. This is also less equal, one is the case or, or, or both or the case when they're equal. And trichotomy is exactly one of them fits less equals or bigger. So these are properties. Um, why should we care about this? Well, if we implement our own operator, we shouldn't create alternative universes, we should apply this. But actually why we care is when we have a, a set and we take an order relation, we get a kind of ordered set, and the properties are shown to define which set we have. And for us as developer, these are the relevant sets, or the relevant ordered sets. So we have a partial order, a strict partial order, strict weak order, and a strict uh, total order, or just a total order. So what's the difference? So first, strict and non-strict. So the, the difference is which operator do we use? So for non-strict uh, ordering, we use the less equal than operator, and for strict, uh, we use less than operator. So this is the, the, the first difference. So partial order has, well, we could look it up. I will not uh, read it now. The, the short summary is a partial order has incomparable elements. We will see in a moment what this means. A strict weak order means all, equal, all elements are comparable and their associated uh, equality is equivalence. And the total order means they are sorted, and uh, the equivalence relation is equality. And it's also worth to notice that the strict weak order is a partial order, and the strict total order is a weak order. And our favorite operator in C++ is the, the less operator, because it's one <laughs> sign less to type. No, it's just a bad joke. Uh, we use it a lot, the less operator, and to, get a, to establish a strict weak ordering. This is for something very uh, specific to programming languages. And strict weak ordering, we have this proper uh, properties, irreflexive, x cannot be less than x. They are asymmetric if x less than b, then it cannot be the other side, and it's transitive. And then we have all elements can keep be compared, because if this is not the case, we have a partial order. And they can be compared if A less than B, then for all C, either A is less than C or C is less than B, or both is the case. So what does this mean? It's actually not that, that complex. It's we have here the, 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 possible pro, uh, so, um, the possibilities when A is less than B. So here we have the first case, A is less than C. We have the second case, where C is less than B. And we have the third case, 
where both is the case. So A is less than C and C is less than B. And when you see it with numbers, you can, could say, is this not always the case? Right? And no, it's not. So we have floating point values. They do not compare. And it makes also for me more sense to think about it in, in, in subsets. When we have two subsets, they can be totally have nothing in common. They cannot be compared. So why do we focus on, on, on strict weak order? Because this is what we use most. It's everywhere in the SDL. We have concepts. We have a compare concept. The compare concept takes less than comparable, which is also a concept, and equivalence. So, and <coughs> we have this as the function object as the DLS. And there, as a less, is also other concepts. It's a binary predicate, which is a predicate, which is a function object. So a binary predicate, it takes two arguments, and the predicate is it converts to a pool. And it's used everywhere. Everywhere we have sorting in, in, in the standard library, this is the relation that is available. And we can re implement this relation because less is more. So this is the implementation, actually. We implement just the less operator, and we can derivate all other operators from the less implementation. So even uh, we can establish um, equivalence. So now look at some code. How would it look in the implementation? So we can implement this as the, the, the less operator as a, as a member function. We can implement it as a free function, taking two arguments. This will not compile because the function wants to access value, and value is private property of foo, so it cannot compile. So we need a friend declaration. This is a lot to write, so you will often see in reality friend, pool, operator, whatever. This is the reason why we have friend implementation for, for operators looking like this. Since C++11, they can be implemented as a const expression. This works great. Also the friend inline uh, variation, and of course the member function can be inlined as, as const expression. And if we implement both, it will compile, but the compiler will say that this is ambiguous, and it will say it prefers the, the version with two arguments. I tend somehow to agree, but it's more to write, especially when you need uh, friends declarations. So some less serious examples, what we can do if you hate the project you're working on. Um, I said here, this will, the compiler will not warn. I've forgotten a const in the member function. These are two different implementations. Don't do this. You can overload this with all types. You can think about this and in each variation. So uh, array references and the constant, non-constant, whatever, and return different results if you want. Um, we don't even need to return a Boolean. We can return strings or whatever. This is even const expression. And I managed even to make a const expression that is verbose, so it tells the, the truth. It will not just always convert to the same Boolean. So this is not what you want to implement, but if you want to overload the operator and have fun, maybe why not, right? Uh, more serious examples. This is the concrete implementation, like you would probably do it. You declare the friend less operator, and you derivate the other operators from this implementation. Um, this problem is as obvious as it's always the same and it's very robust. Even if you uh, implement equality, it becomes two functions more. And once there have been suggested a solution for this, that there is a default implementation for all these operators, but this has been hidden from the standard committee in STD real ops. Anyone ever used this? No, most people didn't know that this exists. I didn't know either. Um, if you want to use it, you, you're using namespace, and you turn you have an object which has just a less operator implemented, and all other objects, uh, all other operators for this object, they, they just exist. So, uh, I think Alexander Stepanov proposed this, but it has been hidden in the namespace. Uh, we have other solutions today, like boost operators. Uh, boost operators gives you much more than, than just compare stuff. Uh, all arithmetic operators and so on. I focus now on, on the comparison uh, functions. You have to derivate from, from these objects. Curiously, curiously recurring template pattern. Um, 
I'm not sure if this is the best way, but it's the only way to have to do it, to tag a type, because currently we have no possibility to, to say is if a type is, is a partial order, if it's a, a strict total order, or it's a weak order type. So, so, so we, with this, we can at least tag a type, and we know what it is when we read it. Um, unfortunately, we don't have mixing. I would find this much more elegant. So we need to do export C++, right? I need to know about the empty base uh, optimization. I create my object and I derive it from this object and pass myself in. This is the way it is. Um, doubles, I've, when I made this around, I've, I've noticed that doubles also compare. This is nice. They give a, a lexical comparison, so they compare the first element, the second, the third, and so on. This can spare a little bit of, 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 of space when you write this. So, this is a little bit examples for implementation, how it is today. All this code is, is you can use. Standard proposal P0515. Three-way uh, comparison operator. We know it is from, from other languages, right? If A is less than B, it could have something that is less than zero. If E is equal, then it's zero. And if A is greater, then we get uh, something that is greater than zero. But this is not the whole truth. The whole truth is what it does. It tells us also the type of order, if it's a total, strict, weak, or a partial order. This is good. Or if it's just comparable, we have object where we just implement the equality operator and not the less operator. And that generates the other operators for us, so we don't need to write them anymore. And this will be nice. And the three-way comparison operator is actually two parts. The one is the token, that the compiler notices the token. And the other thing is what is included in CMB or, or compare. We don't know the header name. There's a little bit of discussion. I found this. We could also use in the in the standard proposal from P0768 include spaceship. I would like this most, but I don't think that this will make it. Um, the implementation of the spaceship operator will look like this. The comparison category is returned from the spaceship operator. You take the other object. And the comparison category is one of these strong ordering, weak ordering, partial ordering. We heard about this before. And strong equality is equal, and weak equality equivalent. So these objects are uh, defined in, in the compare header. This object can have values. The values are named, equal, equivalent, non-equal, non-equivalent, less, greater, and unordered. And together, they give us the information about the object. So in future, we will know exactly what is implemented on the object. There will be no surprises. And we cannot compare everything, because not every com uh, combination of those makes sense. So this is actually what we can, can implement. Strong order ring can less equal or greater. Weak ordering less equal or equivalent or greater. A partial order is less equivalent, greater, or unordered. Strong equality, equal, non-equal, weak equality, has just equivalent or non-equivalent. And this is the graphic representation. I hope it's big enough. This is from the standard. This uh, comparison category, they convert down. So you can, strong ordering can become a, a weak ordering. A weak ordering can become a partial ordering. If you uh, return something from your, from your members, if you want to go the other side, you need to implement this. This would look something like this. I have an element with a floating point value, and, but I want to have a weak ordering. I compare it. If the, the comparison of the floating point tells me this is unordered, I need to handle it somehow. Maybe I define, OK, which is the non-comparable element. I put it to the end to delete it and so. Otherwise, uh, I return uh, my ordering category with the proper value. Hmm. We can also have a default implementation, but we need to write nothing. So this will be a total order because integers give us a total order, and we don't need to do anything. And we have all the information on the object where we had to type until now very much code lines repetitive. Yes, and that's it for me. 20 minutes, great. More information in the standard proposals. Uh, uh, 0515, it's from Herb Sapta. And from Walter E. Brown, it's about the library support that's required. I will take questions after the next talk because I will pass the microphone directly to Abit and thanks for listening. <laughs>